So now in this video, we're going to go over measuring current of electrical circuits. And uh, so we're just going to look at a resistor and an LED for the most part. So one thing to note is that uh, first off, we're going to have to put the meter in series with the components to take that measurement. We'll look at that later. So this little A is indicating that there's a meter with the probe, one probe touching that side would be the red probe. And then the uh, other probe, it should be the uh, black probe. If you put them backwards, you'll just get a negative number. But in uh, any case, that's what that A means. It's a meter with one probe touching each of those components electrically or touching one of the uh, power supplies uh, electrically. You don't want to measure the current of a power supply because current's going to run through the meter freely and it may burn it out. So let's get to that. We're not going to use this meter to take the actual measurements. But uh, if we were, since it's an LED, maybe we'll have to deal with uh, 20 milliamps. Uh, probably not. It'll probably be less than 20 milliamps. And so you could probably set it to 20 milliamps. As long as the current flows through is below 20 milliamps, you're fine. But if you think you may get above 20 milliamps, you'd want to set the meter to 200 milliamps. Now, the uh, red probe here is for measuring these things, voltage. So for this meter, I would have to move the red probe over here to the uh, milliamp spot right there. If we were measuring higher currents than the uh, milliamp range, so this goes up to 200 milliamps. So if it's above 200 milliamps, we'd set the meter to 20 amps and we would move the red probe over to 20 amps. So even half of an amp, I would uh, move the red uh, jumper over there. But in any case, that's where you would want the red jumper for this meter. You want it set to measure higher current than what you can expect. So now that brings us to the meter we are going to use just because it's easier to uh, film. All I have to do is set it to the milliamp setting right there. If it's close to an amp, you should still set it to the amp setting if it's like half of an amp or so. I think this goes up to about uh, 0.6 amps before it starts having problems. But in uh, any case, uh, we'll definitely be in the milliamp range, so pretty straightforward. Red probe stays there unless we're measuring high current, again, for this particular meter. And uh, so, now this video, we're going to deal just with a 5 volt power supply. And I already have current limited to a 20 milliamps from the power supply. So that would help protect the meter in that other the other meter I showed you where it had a 20 milliamp setting the power supply can't exceed that there's a fuse there's actually a fuse probably for each setting for the uh, multimeter and uh, if you go above the uh, current that it's rated or that it's set to I should say then you'll probably bl blow that fuse if the current is high enough but uh, any case we're gonna stay back here and I have the uh, probes right now the there's an opening between the resistor and that jumper and you see no current so we're going to finish the path with the two probes you can see they plug into the meter there so the current that goes through the resistor and the LED is also going to go through the uh, two probes and the meter the power supply is not on that's the problem right there there we go the output was not on so when you plug it in the display is always on but you have to hit this power button down there to uh, get the power to output. Now we'll uh, go over there and there you can see that uh, we're going to look earlier I calculated that uh, we're going to have about three milliamps of current if it's a red LED. I didn't write red LED but uh, I did a couple scenarios with LEDs where the current might be different and uh, there you can see we got the same current there even if we measure it between the two components that's because there's one path that the current's going through, kind of like uh, water flowing through pipes. The current is flowing through the uh, two components and the meter equally, and it's coming out of the power supply. But the power supply is not showing the same amount of current because it's not as accurate right there. And also, I think it kind of rounds down. So it may say like uh, 2.99 milliamps, which would be the same as a zero. 0.00299 it might be that but since the 2 is there it just shows 2 it doesn't round from uh, what I notice but uh, even then it's not as accurate as the multimeter as you can see there 
we got three uh, milliamps. So I'm going to pluck the LED and uh, I illustrated this. We'll look at the illustration coming up. But now we have a blue LED. So we swapped an LED for an LED, but now it's gonna be probably a little bit more than two milliamps of current right there. And there you can see, it's about uh, a milliamp less than it was. And I bypassed the LED. I didn't mean to do that, that's why current went up. We had the uh, five volts across the resistor, so five milliamps. Now we have the LED, it's gonna drop some of the voltage. So that was a mistake, but uh, again, we didn't really risk anything, and especially because I have current limited with the power supply. That's why I always do that. And uh, there you can see we have the same voltage even if we shuffle where we take our measurement right there. It doesn't matter. They're in series. That's what matters. Again, I use the current on the display here all the time in my videos. I usually point out it's probably about a milliamp off. Looks like it's usually about a milliamp lower than what you would have seen if you used a multimeter. But still, it's usually close enough for most of the stuff that I'm doing. And cut. And so here's the illustration I mentioned earlier. So we had a couple scenarios we looked at. And we had a red LED. They tend to drop about two volts. It takes about two volts for them to conduct. As long as there's about two volts across them, then they start conducting pretty much freely. So you have a current limiting resistor. So that two volts is gonna be taken away from the voltage across the resistor. So five subtract two is three. And uh, since it's a 1000 ohm resistor, five volts divided by 1000 ohms is a 0 0.003 amps, which is the same as three milliamps. And so it varies slightly with uh, how much current's flowing through it, with how much voltage it blocks. But uh, for the most part, you can get a really good estimate. And then again, the same with the blue. The blue LED was blocking another volt and uh, blocks about three volts, as do green LEDs. So about two volts across the resistor and a two milliamps. Now, you'll remember I accidentally measured from the uh, negative supply to the resistor right there. And so there was no diode dropping uh, voltage from the resistor. We had five milliamps. We had the full five volts across there. So I did that by accident, but it was actually probably a good thing to do. And for this video anyways. So now we're gonna look at another thing is that uh, if you have like a circuit that's already soldered or whatever, it's uh, really not convenient to open up the circuit to spread out a couple components or the supply or whatnot. If you have a switch on there, the switch is already an opening unless you're pressing the button. So you can fill that opening with the meter and measure the current that would be flowing as if the switch was closed because the meter basically kind of acts like a switch that is turned on. And so now we'll take that measurement across uh, using the switch I should say. So meter set to a milliamps, the uh, red probe where it needs to be, black probe, it's almost always in the same spot. For this particular meter it is always in this spot. It may, you may have to move it with uh, different meters for different measurements. But in uh, any case Set to measure current, and uh, we're going to complete the circuit so we can go across the switch like that if we want, or we can go to this side and measure across there. So these two top pins are always connected, the two bottom pins are always connected. So that's the same electrical connection, whether I go there, there, or to the uh, resistor. Same with uh, this one over here. They're all connections, and uh, I must not put a switch into that spot very much because it's pushing it out. So it kind of rejects them until you start stretching out the metal. But in uh, any case, that's really about it for the video. Always make sure you turn the uh, meter off and get it off of current. So this one, to turn it off, you have to get it off of current. But uh, the other meter I showed you, there's a power button. You still wanna set it to voltage or whatnot because that's safer. If you turn it on and you uh, go to measure uh, voltage, that's safe to do, of course, if it's voltage. But uh, current, if you try to measure a power supply, it'll probably put too much current through the meter and blow that fuse as I mentioned earlier. So it's safer just to put it to voltage if it doesn't have a dial that you have to turn to off right there. So hope that makes sense. But in any case, I'll pop up some other videos. Make sure you check them out. Click like, subscribe the bell, uh, and all that. Donate to Patreon if you can. That would help out the most, but uh, everything helps. So thanks for watching. I will see you in the next video.